Thomas Saunders uh, taking care of live stream as usual. And we have Brad and Lucy Green. Woohoo! Hey, hey. Thank you for being here. And the dynamic uh -huh. Tab Carter <laughs> as our reader. We'll try to widen the doors as you leave here, as your head will swell at that term dynamic. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Next week, we will be having a drive through Eucharist. And what that will mean is, and this is a slight change from last time, immediately after the service, uh, myself and lay Eucharistic ministers will be going outside and distributing communion. It'll be wafers only. And we will be doing that up until the noon hour or until everybody has been served. You just stay in your cars and we will give you uh, pre-packaged blessed wafers for that. It's my hope that we can do drive-through communion through the rest of this month and then look in October about the possibility of having some form of in-person worship depending on the COVID numbers. Also a reminder that we have a drive-through food drive coming up the last Saturday of this month. Uh, last time we did this, we raised 900 pounds of food just through this church. I'm hoping, I'm expecting that we can do 1,000 pounds. So start buying food now, non-perishable goods. Hold on to that until the last Saturday, and then we will take that to the 143 ministries. So thank you. And we begin this morning's worship with a grand old favorite, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done 
and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And, and our, our mouths mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let us say together the Venite. Come, Come let, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, Come let, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The psalm appointed for de today is Psalm 149. It is to be read in unison. Alleluia. Sing, Sing to, to the Lord a new song. song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in his maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them be joyful on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their throat and a two-edged sword in their hand to wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings in chains and their nobles with links of iron, to inflict on them the judgment decreed. This is glory for all his faithful people. Alleluia. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. O to no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And now the servant song. Yeah. 
A reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I tell you, if two or three, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This weekend, as you know, marks the unofficial end of summer. And there is a part of me that is glad to put this particular summer behind me. It's not just the heat of the thermometer that makes me say that, but it's the heat of the rhetoric that surrounds so much of what we do and say these days. I mean, really, who knew that the response to an international pandemic could be politicized? Who knew that the safe reopening of schools would be such a hot potato? Now, Facebook has said that they will discontinue running anything political, or at least the political ads, <clears throat> for seven days before the elections. But boy, I wish they would start it right now. And more and more, I find myself stepping away from watching anything other than Netflix, Turner classic movies, woohoo or the Disney Channel because of the bombardment of political ads on all sides. Mulan, anyone? <laughs> the end of summer does not mean the end of these concerns for any of us, but it does mean, and this is what I'm excited about, it does mean that we are inching closer to a vaccine for COVID-19. It does mean that we will be that much closer to something that might resemble our pre-pandemic lives. But here's my concern. Here's my concern. As a nation, I wonder if the way we have savaged one another during this peculiar season will continue to be our new normal. Because, beloved, that is not how the children of God a call to treat one another. Remember our baptismal covenant, the sacred promise we make to God and to our people? One of the things we promise is to respect the dignity of every human being. There's no asterisk attached to that sentence. Nothing that says the following are exempt from our godly respect. Republicans, Democrats, persons of color, or the elderly with underlying health concerns. It does mean that every person we meet has something of the divine spark of the created God residing within them. Last week I said that we were to let holiness rather than lowliness define our lives. We are to let holiness rather than lowliness define our lives. And I quoted that blessed saint, C.S. Lewis, who said that next to the blessed sacrament itself, your neighbor is the holiest object presented to your senses. Now, St. Paul is continuing this theme of loving your neighbor today in his letter to the Romans when he wrote, Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves one another has fulfilled the law. Any other commandments 
are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love, love is the fulfilling of the law. Now, I'm a big fan of Bishop Stephen Charleston. And if you aren't familiar with him, you should be. And this is what you need to know about him. He's a Native American who's the retired Bishop of Alaska. He's actually one of the very few public figures that I follow on Facebook. And I find in him a person of godly hope and godly faith. He's an optimist in the best sense of that word. And if there is a theme in his daily meditations, I think it's this. What might it mean if we came through this season having practiced seeing our neighbor as one worth of godly respect and love? In his post from August 26, Charleston wrote, the forces at work around us are not only scientific, political, and economic, they are also profoundly spiritual. Something new is coming into being because something old is being released. We may not know the timeline, but we do know the outcome. We have no reason to be fearful and every reason to be patient. When the spirit moves, it's in her good own time, and only justice and mercy follow in her path. Something new is coming into being. That something new can mean true love of neighbor, not just the people we like or the people who think like us. Something new is coming into being. And for that new love to come into our lives, we've got to throw out something old, namely the tarnished way of being a Christian that we are seeing played out large. Now, I know it's easy to point a finger at someone like hmm, Jerry Falwell Jr., but y'all, that's for Jesus to handle. Jesus is much more interested in seeing what we discover when we point the finger at ourselves. In Matthew's gospel, Jesus calls his followers hypocrites for that kind of action. Do you remember this verse? Eugene Peterson puts it this way, don't pick on people, jump on their failures, criticize their faults, unless, of course, you want the same treatment. That critical spirit has a way of boomeranging. It's easy to see a smudge on your neighbor's face and be oblivious to the ugly sneer on your own. I know that this is what I have to confess day after day. I have to confess that I would so much rather work on the sins of others than face my own shortcomings. I have to confess that I would so much rather hold on to old wounds, old ways of thinking, of loving, of acting, rather than let go and see what new thing God can usher in. And I think I'm in good company. Now, I'm not an alcoholic, but I have a deep, deep appreciation for the work of Alcoholics Anonymous. Their 12-step programs have saved thousands and thousands and thousands of lives. And the first step to a life-altering change begins with this admission. It's step number one. We admit that we are powerless over alcohol, that our lives have become unmanageable. Fill in the blank for yourself. We admit that we are powerless over what, what, and that our lives become unmanageable. And then comes the second step. Step two, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. And if this is beginning to sound a little bit like the gospel, keep in mind 
that one of the founders of AA was an Episcopal priest. Because, beloved, only a power greater than ourselves can restore us and the world to sanity. And that's the power of God's Holy Spirit working first in our own lives and then through our lives into the lives of others. It's letting go of what AA would call stinking thinking. I love that term, stinking thinking. And letting love in and letting love rule. It's the stinking thinking of the world that is so confusing right now. And one of the more grotesque examples of stinking thinking this past week was a distorted post which basically said it was okay if the majority, the 180,000 people who have COVID-19 passed away because after all, they had underlying health conditions. Really? Does that mean it's okay if your husband has diabetes but dies of COVID? Does that mean it's okay if your daughter has asthma but dies of COVID? Or does that mean it's okay if your neighbor has high blood pressure but dies of COVID? Can you really imagine Jesus saying any such thing? And if you can't imagine Jesus saying any such thing, why should we? Franciscan monk Richard Rohr, in his own work with a 12-step program, says it this way. Watch your thoughts. They become words. Watch your words. They become actions. Watch your actions. They become habits. Watch your habits, they become your character. Watch your character, it is now your destiny. Beloved, our destiny is to reflect the divine image of God, and that divine image is love. It's in every single one of us. But it's no easier for us to reflect that image than it is for the alcoholic to push aside a drink. We have to recognize we are powerless, but God is all powerful. God is all powerful. Remember what Bishop Charleston said, something new is coming into being because something old is being released and beloved, I believe it, I believe it. So put down, oh, for God's sakes, literally for God's sakes, put down the old grudges, put down the old hates, put down the old way of thinking and doing, and let in the new and renewing love of Jesus. Because you know the old way isn't working. It's destroying us, and it's destroying our country. We can't do it. We're powerless, but God can. God can. Remember those first two steps. Acknowledge your powerlessness. Acknowledge your higher power, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Put down all that is old and not working. Put down that stinking thinking. And then feel the breeze of the Holy Spirit Come into your life and be renewed and let that breeze blow over everyone you come in contact with. I pray you do it. For God's sake, do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you would please join me in reading the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. Amen the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended, he descended to, to the, the dead. dead. On, On the third day he rose again. He ascended, he ascended into, into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We'll say suffrage A. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts, for as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A prayer for quiet confidence. O God of peace, who has taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved, in quietness and comfort, confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And a litany for this Labor Day weekend. Lord, bless the work of our hands. Bless all those who toil and labor. Lord, Lord bless, bless the work, work of their hands. For those who've lost their jobs, who are unemployed or underemployed, let us pray. Lord, Lord bless, bless the work, work of their hands. hands. For those who work in hazardous conditions without sufficient protection, let us pray. Lord, Lord bless, bless the work, the work of, of their hands. hands. For those who face discrimination, harassment, or abuse in the workplace, let us pray. Lord, Lord bless, bless the work, work of their hands. For those who are not paid fair wages or who are denied legally due overtime pay, let us pray. Lord, Lord bless, bless the work, work of their hands. For migrant agricultural workers and all who work the land, let us pray. Lord, Lord bless, bless the work of their hands. For all employers, that they may seek to provide a just work environment. Let Lord, us pray. Lord, bless the work of their hands. For those who struggle to balance job commitments with the needs of their family, let us pray. Lord, bless the work of their hands. For all humans who seek to become co-creators of the promised kingdom, let us pray. Lord, bless the work of their hands. And at this hour, we pray for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, for those in need of healing, for Nathaniel Pike, Holly Panero, and Joy Waldo, for all those with COVID-19, uh, COVID and for those who are racing to develop a vaccine, for all who are homebound. We pray for the safety of Joseph Haydow and all who serve abroad, 
and for Abby Brooks as she completes basic training for the Navy. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, for those celebrating birthdays, for Sue Porterfield, Cheryl Spessert, Karen Shepard, Janet Barnett, Grayson Randolph, and Billy Ferguson. For all who are celebrating anniversaries, for Bill and Sarah Liebel, Robert and Linda Bargeron. And we give thanks for our partnership with Martinez Elementary School and the Claiborne at Westlake. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Loving God, through your Son, you gave us an example of how to love one another and how to embody this love in labor to serve the poor and the oppressed. Give us the strength to continue working to bring forth your kingdom here on earth, a kingdom of justice and peace, where all know compassion, grace, and mercy. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now for our closing hymn, Rejoice, the Lord is King. Beloved, may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. And always remember how short life is and how little time we have to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love, make haste to be kind, and the rich and abundant blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. All right, quarantine. You ready? We're ready. Woo. You ready for me to bring it on? I'm so ready. Y'all ready for me to bring it on? Let's do it. Here we go. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Well done, good and faithful servants. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.